my coat picking up uh, <laughs> strategy <laughs> for you. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> Look at that. Piper's playing. Oh, Finally. Can't wait oh, to sniffing her crotch. Hi everybody, it's PJ and today I want to show you something really quick. This is Peter Thomas Ross, Peter Thomas Ross face serum and this is my hand. And I don't know if you're going to be able to tell the difference, but this stuff takes old skin and makes it look so young. Like it doesn't, like my hand crinkles and then you get that. I love this stuff. I put it on my face every day. Uh, and it's just like you just need a little bit to make your skin look young again. It's amazing stuff. It, it takes all that crepe. What do they call it? Crepe? Oh, crepe. That's paper, folks. Anyway, how are you? I, um, oh, don't, okay. I um, am getting ready to go today, and I figured I'd talk to you. I had an OBE that I wanted to talk to you about, but I also had, um, I bought this thing, real quick, I bought this thing, which is like, I, I think I'm going to start up December 1st at work, and it's like um, all these positive things you can do like each day. I'll show you. It's so cool. I'm bringing it to work today to hang up and we're all going to do it at work and see like because I got some really eclectic people at work I want to see what their answers are to some of it so it's like an every almost like an event calendar for positive affirmation but we're going to use it on on the crazies at work so let's see what happens anyway oh my god the OBE okay so mm, just bet on myself so um I was trying ever since that OBE where my friend Becky was in it. I've been trying to get back there because I was like, oh my God, like, is there a message? People were saying she's dead. I don't think she's dead. I would have heard. Um, it was just because she doesn't live that far from me. I would have heard about it. It was just a um, amazing like message or was she with me or like so many people gave me like ideas on what it could have been so um I've been trying to get back there but um instead I ended up back at the cabin so here's what I think I think that um I'm looking at OBEs like layers okay so there's a layer of OBEs where I'm home because many times when I uh, travel I'm here like I get out of my body but I'm still in my home and it still looks like my home and it'll be a very subtle something that leads me to understand that I'm traveling right but that being said um, when I realized the cabin was home, so do I never really leave my home? Am I really like just always here, but grabbing on to the next level of where you go? I don't know. Um, so I had this OBE, Jeff's involved. I had an OBE and when I came to, um, I, I was back at the cabin again. Now that I recognize that I'm like literally still here when I'm in the cabin. Um, I'm looking for like similarities. Like when I came on the other side of this OBE, I was very much aware that I was home, even though I was in the cabin. I was like, oh, okay, well this is what happens and this is how it happens. And I should, um, I should look around. So I start looking around. And let me tell you what else I re recognize. I recognize that, remember I said I was at this house on this one OBE and there was this terrible windstorm. Do you remember that OBE? Because I do. That one scared me a little. And I knew it was my house. Like, no matter what, I was like, I know where everything is in every drawer. I like, it was freaking me out how much I knew. It was because I was here. It's because I think I'm always here. I think that where I am, like, isn't necessarily geography as much as, like, 
the next plane. And what does that say for the universe? What does that say for where we live on a daily? Like, like when we look out into the universe and see stars that are millions and millions of lights away, light years away, are they really just here? You know? So anyway, um, yeah, it's some deep thinking can go on with that one. But, uh, okay, so I get to the cabin and I start looking around for anything that'll, like, that'll connect me to this house in the cabin, though. You know what I mean? So I go out into, there's a kitchen part of the cabin. It's not really, like, it's not really, like, um, a kitchen in the traditional sense. Uh, there's a couple cabinets and a sink that looks like it's never been used. Um, but at any rate, and the cabinet cabinets don't look anything like my cabinets there. I, I think I'm going to draw or paint the cabin for everybody so you can see, because somebody once said to me, oh, there's this movie about a cabin that, um, like, and they go there and God's there. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I saw it on like HBO or something one day. So I flipped it on because I was like, Wow, maybe we all go to cabins. And their cabin was beautiful. It had flowers and like, like, a, like beautiful. And my cabin is not like that. My cabin looks like somebody abandoned it in the Ozarks a thousand years ago. So, ah, uh, not a thousand years ago. I would say like 1940, 1930, 1920, because it has the old-fashioned knobs on the sink and stuff. Um, and I've never seen a bathroom there. Like, what, do you not go to the bathroom and the next plane? I don't know. Anyway, so, um, so I get out and I start looking for, like, evidence that I'm in my home at the same time I'm in the cabin. So I, I go into the kitchen and I'm looking around. I don't know why I didn't open the cabinet doors, but I didn't. And I'm looking around. And so there's just, it's really kind of empty at that point. I give up my search in the kitchen and I start walking out to the living room. And when I get to the living room, I realize that where the fireplace is, is like similar. And the fireplace is an old, like, I guess stone fireplace, not brick. It's like made of stones. And it's just like a carved out fireplace, you know? <clears throat> and, um, so and when I, when I saw Jeff there last, there was like a chair, which doesn't exist now. Uh, if it was there, it's no longer there that he was like sitting in and holding on to. So as I walk over to the um, fireplace, it's getting darker and darker and darker because there's no lights. There's not like lights overhead. It's just the light from outside. And the only real windows or openings to the outside in the living room is the front door. Okay, there's no like bay window or something. So it's just like this long kind of room with a fireplace at the end and then the front door and there's no door on the front door so it's just like wide open and the light is coming in from outside i hear nothing by the way this time usually if somebody's outside there'll be a noise or something that runs me outside i heard nothing this time so i so i i walk towards the fireplace don't know why just did and i'm like as I'm walking towards the fireplace, it's getting like darker and darker and darker and darker. And when I turn around to, because I started getting like a little scared, like, why is it so dark? And I turned around to look at the front door. And when I turned around, I was in like almost complete darkness, like, like it was dusk outside or something and there was very little light coming from that corner but you couldn't even make out that there was like a doorway like there was before so i was like i like hitched my breath i was like <gasps> like what happened and then i heard jeff and he said what are you looking for and i was like and i was like jeff Jeff, I miss you. I love you. I think he's tired of me saying that because he didn't answer me. And he's like, what are you looking for? 
And I said, I don't know. I'm looking for evidence. That's what I said. I said, I'm looking for evidence. And he said, isn't this enough? I, I, I by the way, did not see him, could not see him. Just his voice came to me. So I, so I guess, I don't know if I annoyed him. He didn't sound annoyed. He was just like, isn't this enough? And like instantly I was like, it should be. Like this feeling crept over me like, why are you questioning everything you see? Why do you keep looking for some sort of evidence? Because that's what I do. Like nine times out of ten, I'm running around trying to find a street sign <laughs> that I can then go home and and like look up and find and go there and see if it's the same. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's my hope is that I go somewhere that I've never been and can like recognize it. I don't need it for anybody else. I don't need to describe it to like you guys or something and then have somebody else find it. I, I kind of needed it for me, but he's right. What am I questioning? And I said, so I say in my head, because I'm not speaking, I'm just thinking this and he's thinking it back kind of. And um, I agreed with him, I know. Oh, I said, I said, I said, you're right. I shouldn't question. I said, does that upset you? And he didn't answer again. And that was twice that I felt like, stop it. Like you're missing the point. So, uh, so I was like, I'm here. Do you want me to go somewhere with you? And he didn't answer. So at that point, I, I didn't want to move or like chance it, but I thought, you know what, relax and and start living in the moment more. So I relaxed my body because I was real tensed up because it was dark and it creeped me out a little. So I relaxed my body and I like went over to where the light was. And as I got closer, the doorway came into view. You know what I mean? Like I could start seeing again and my pulse stopped racing a little. And I, I walked outside and I looked around and I said, this is beautiful because it is when I walk outside of the cabin <clears throat> in front of me is like bramble and bushes. And then there's a path that kind of like a dirt path that kind of goes down by the brambles and bushes. And then it, it curves around and you go all it curves up, curves around. <clears throat> Sorry, it's early curves goes up. Uh, like on the side of the bramble and bushes, but then it's like a sheer cliff down to the water. And, but then it makes like a turn, goes down and there's like almost like a beachy, well, it's like rocks, but a rocky beach area. And then there's like rocks in this really wide kind of river, but not as wide as like the Northeast River or the Susquehanna. It's just like a really wide creek, I guess, or something, but the water's very clear and beautiful and rushing and it's, it's white foamy and bubbly. Um, and so I walked outside and said, ah, oh, this is beautiful. And I felt like hands on my shoulders, like, like this, like here, I felt hands on my shoulders and then thumbs just like rubbing against my back. And I was like, okay, okay, I can do this. I can relax. And then it all went away. And then I came home. So here's my thing. I think I was annoying. <laughs> I think my need to make this, um, oh, what's the word? legitimate is ruining some of the times I could have had like with Jeff or out on the other plane or all this because I keep feeling like, oh, get some, like get evidence. I, get, I do it all the time. Like I look for, I look for Jeff, but I also look for like, like I said, street signs or, or an incident or a name or a number or something that I can bring back with me and and legitimize what I'm doing. And I think I'm fucking it up by doing that. I think I just, that'll come. I just need to relax and be more in the moment. So lesson learned for whoever's listening. And that was another thing. I feel like I'm missing opportunity to talk to Jeff because I'm not like 
talking to him on a daily basis and I was like, you know, I don't like because I don't necessarily see or hear him, I shouldn't just assume he's not there. So on the way home yesterday in my car, I like talked to him. I was like, like, hi baby, I hope you're here. And I just like catched him up on his kids and stuff. And I just am gonna do that. I'm going to insinuate him in my life insinuate my other travels in my life in a much more natural way because I think like like anybody I don't think I'm unique but I think I'm being ridiculous in just constantly trying to find the key to this so I was talking to my mom right and my mom like says to me oh no I don't believe in ghosts but you talked to your best friend Alma who died after she died oh yes but I don't believe in ghosts. So my mom's very dichotomous on this, okay? But she too travels. She just doesn't realize she's traveling. So we were talking and she was talking about how um, she likes her dreams, the ones when she can control it and bounce on things. And I'm like, <laughs> everybody I know, the first thing they do when they travel is go out to telephone lines and bounce on them. Because they're so accessible and I think the idea that you can float and fly and all that is like mind bending and it's like the first thing you want to do. Like it really is. So I started talking to her about it and I've talked to her about it before where I knew she had done some kind of travel and whatnot. But this time she was like more open to like, yeah, I do that. Yeah, I go. Like she can't control it yet but I want to try and help her and I want to try and help you guys too like if anybody wants to travel I'm going to try to give like lessons and connect you to the best ways that I found to travel the things that I focus on that like take me out of my body quickly things like that so I'm going to do a lesson I hate to say I'm going to do but I do want to do here's a here's a quick lesson one of the most amazing things first off use hemi-sync like anything that has binaural beats opens up the both sides of your brain at the same time. That's why you hear it. And that gives you like a higher mind right away. Then I use, they say that you have, you know, your third eye chakra, your crown chakra. But some say that there's a chakra above your crown chakra. And it's, it's like void of color. And that that is like, kind of the way in that's what I use a lot like I'll go third eye and I'll spin it and if you don't know how to do that look up any kind of chakra cleansing I go third eye then I go crown and then I go above it to the kind of it's like the secret menu of McDonald's this is the secret chakra and I spin it and spin it and spin it and while I'm spinning it and the binaural, and I'll have to be, if I'm awake and like not doing it like completely, like I can travel without even knowing I'm traveling, like not even trying. And sometimes I'm invited to travel, but if I'm trying to travel, that's the hardest time for me to go through. It's like, it's like I'm trying to force my way. And so that, that chakra that spins, you just start spinning it in your mind. It's a it's a big ball of energy and it has no colors, like void of colors, just like this empty, I'm going to say it's like a little portal in itself and you just kind of spin, spin, spin and then shoot yourself through it and you'll come out on the other side. That's one of the ways. I'll do a more detailed one, but I didn't want to say I was going to do something and not do it because I do that all the time. All right. So anyway, that's all I got. I got to go. I have to have uh, this doctor's appointment. I love you guys. I am going to show you. Uh, I'll make a separate video of the positive thing at work. It's going to be so funny because my guys are funny. They're like crazy. So, all right. I love you guys. Bye.